Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. Have you noticed, Minna, the new houses all seem to be on one floor? I'd like that. With nagging backache and the muscular aches and pains I've had lately, it's no fun climbing stairs. I know. With nagging backache, all I'd want is relief. How? Try Doan's pills. Right. Doan's pills are an analgesic and mild diuretic to the kidneys. Nagging backache, also headache, dizziness, and muscular aches and pains may come on with overexertion, emotional upsets, or everyday stress and strain. Doan's pain-relieving action is often the answer, and they also offer mild diuretic action through the kidneys. So if nagging backache is making you feel worn out, tired, and miserable, with restless, sleepless nights, don't wait. Try Doan's pills, used successfully by millions for over 60 years. See if they don't bring you the same welcome relief. Get Doan's pills today. To save money, by Doan's big economy size. My gracious, Doc, I never heard so much complaining in all my life. Well, it's just that I don't like walking all the way to the end of Dodge to look at some horse that you want to buy. Oh, he's a pretty good horse. Oh, probably poor as a crow. Doc, if you remember, I didn't even ask you to come with me. Well, I wouldn't let you go alone. The boss could sell you a blind horse, lame and three legs, and you wouldn't know the difference. You don't know the difference between a slick fork and a single tree, and you're trying to tell me... Well, I'll be... Well, look at that fellow yonder, over by the stable. Oh, what about it? Doc, that's a coffin he's got in his wagon, ain't it? My golly, it sure looks like it. Uh, hello there. Hello. What's that you got there? Ain't the wagon? Well, that's a burying box. And a mighty fine one, too. I made it myself. Has it uh, got anything in it? Well, now, that's a mighty personal question, mister. I, I don't even know your name. Oh, well. <laughs> I'm Chester Proudfoot, and, yeah. and this here is Doc Adams. Yeah. Well, my name's Master. Chris Master. Glad to know you. Hey, uh, you you a real doctor? Well, well, that's been argued both ways. <laughs> I like you. Well, I... Well, I sure wish you'd been here when Orson Boggs took sick. Well, who's Orson Boggs? Dutch Orson Boggs laying right there in that box. Oh, what did I have? He killed an acre. He fought it for a whole week, and then he just give up. He was the best friend I had in this whole world. You live around here, do you? No. No, we was traveling and heading west. You aim to take him with you? Uh, Orson Bob? Uh, no, no, sir. His, his, his last request was to be buried in a proper burying ground, and, and I'm going to do it right here in Dodge. Uh, proper burying uh, Yeah. You mean you call Boot Hill a, a proper burying ground? It'll do. I'm going to plant him this afternoon, and then uh, tonight I've got to fill his other last request. Uh, what was that? Well, uh, Orson left me share of our grub steak. It ain't much, but it'll serve for a wake. Uh, a wake? Yeah, well, it's fitting and proper. A man should have a wake if he wants one, and Orson said to hold a big one. Well, they hold a yeah. wake, you know, before the burying, uh, not after. Well, this is the way Orson wanted it, so that's the way it's going to be. I'm going to hire a room and invite everybody who wants to, to come. And you're invited, both of you. Oh, well, uh, yes, thank you, but... Yeah. 
Uh, uh, what about this burying? Uh, yeah. well, uh, uh, don't you need a preacher and all? Oh, no, Orson Boggs had no dealing with preachers. No, he asked me to look, <coughs> dig a hole and put him in it and fill it up. And that's all. Well, maybe, maybe I'll speak a word or two. Well, I've got to find the stable, man. I'll see you later. And be sure to come to the wake. Bring anybody you like. Lots of liquor. Lots of liquor. You know, Doc, I wouldn't be surprised by what I went to that barrel and wake. Well, you know something, Chester? I, I wouldn't be surprised if you did either. Three days, and you've got to go and get married, huh? Yeah. Oh, now, look here, Mr. Dillon. Just because a man wants to look nice for a party, ain't no cause to think he's clean lost his mind. Oh, party? Well, that's different. <laughs> Who's celebrating? Gus Mather. He's holding awake tonight. Oh. Lots of free food and liquor, all you can drink, he says. Uh, who died? A, f a friend of his, Mr. Orson Boggs. Orson Boggs? I don't believe I know him either. Yeah, well, you're invited to the wake anyway. Everybody is. And you'd better come, too. Why? There's something funny about this whole business, Mr. John. Uh, how's that? Well, sir, Gus Mather drove into Dodge with Orson Boggs already in his coffin. Buried him on Boot Hill this afternoon with no preacher, no nothing. You think something's wrong? To tell the truth, I don't know what to think. Well, we'll go see. That is, if you don't mind being with a man who isn't quite as flashy a dresser as you were. Oh, no, I don't mind a bit. <laughs> All right. All right, let's go, then. I hope we ain't gonna be late. Yeah, from the sound of things, they're just warming up. No, I mean for the vittles. I hope it ain't all gone. Well, if I know you, you'll make out somehow. And, and I want to thank all of you for coming tonight. Orson Boggs! Would have been mighty pleased. Orson Boggs was the best friend I ever had. He was the best man ever to come out of the Red Bank country. <laughs> Here's to him. Here's to him. Oh, my goodness. What a way to mourn for a man. Yeah. Of course, if he's dead, I guess it don't matter now. Anyway, that this man that sure doesn't know how to throw a party, don't he? Well, it must be worth it to him. How do you mean? This whole business could be a way to let the world know that Orson Boggs is dead, Chester. You mean you think he ain't? Yeah, it could be. Well, why would a man want people to think Boggs was dead if he ain't? To escape the law would be a good reason. But we ain't never heard of no Orson Boggs being wanted. Uh, maybe he hasn't been found out yet. Now, let's go say hello to Gus, huh? We're not being polite. <laughs> well, I guarantee we won't find out nothing from him. Yeah, we can try. <laughs> hey, hey! Hey, hello there. Hello there, Chester. Well, hello, Gus. Yeah. Uh, uh, this here is, is Marshall Dillon. Hello, is... Gus. <laughs> Marshall. Oh, well, well, you're welcome here. Thank you. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, let me get you a drink. Thank you. Yeah. It's too bad about Orson Boggs, Gus. Where was he from, anyway? Oh, he has a long way from here, Marshal. But he was from Kansas, right? Oh, oh yes, yes, you can say that. Here's your drink, Marshal, uh, Chester. Thank yes, you. he was from Kansas, all right. We, 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 we was headed west. And I'll have to go it alone now. Uh-huh. Yeah. You from Kansas, too, Gus? Uh, uh, me, me, uh, I'm from everywhere. Uh, I got no real home, Marshal. I just, uh, you, you just drift around like Orson Boggs did. Yeah. Yeah. Just as we came in, you were saying something about the Red Bank country. That's down near the Pawnee Reservation, isn't it? Uh-huh, yeah. yeah. Well, we drifted through here a couple of times, and, uh, and we, uh, we... Uh, well, Marshal, I, I better see to the men's drinks. I've got to keep the boys oiled up, you know. Yeah, come on, boys. Yeah. He's a sly old devil, ain't he? He's hiding something, all right, Chester. And it's going to take time to find out what it is. Well... You sure ain't gonna find out tonight. And as long as we're here, there ain't no reason to be standoffish, are they? No, I guess not, Chester. <laughs> Come on. 
Come on, let's belly up to the bar. Yes, sir. <laughs> for a beer. You want to join me, or have you sinned enough for one day? You put it that way, and I don't know what to say. <laughs> then don't say anything. Come on. Well, Matt, Chester, Kitty? come to join the party? Oh, what party? Gus Matt is over there. He's buying drinks for everybody. Uh, we already been to one of his parties. Two beers, Sam, huh? I heard about the wakey, too, the other night. But I heard there were men drinking there until dawn. Yeah, and most of them were in here the next day trying to cure their hangover. Oh, thanks, Sam. Here you go, Chester. Yeah, well, thank you, Mr. Dillon. Well, Matt, you're getting as free with your money as Gus Mather. He's been buying drinks in here right and left for three days running. You think he has millions? Kitty, hmm? how much money has Gus been spending? Oh, that little group he's got over there with him now is nothing. Come evening, he'll have 15 or 20 men he's treating. It's always like that. What are you thinking, Mr. Dillon? I'm thinking that's too much money for a man to come by easily. Legal, you mean? Yeah, legal. But now, Donnie, Mr. Dillon, why don't you just go set him down hard some words and make him talk? Uh, Chester, I can't just beat it out of him. Besides, he's pretty sly. He's only let one thing slip so far. What's that? About Orson Boggs coming from the Red Bank country. Remember how he tried to cover that up when I asked him about it? Oh, by golly, he did, didn't he? Yeah, it's a long way from here. But we're going anyway. We are. Finish your beer and get the horses. I'll meet you at the office. Yes, sir. So long, Kitty. Good luck, man. <laughs> Well, they sure ain't much of a place. I reckon that fellow was right. At least said he thought the bogs lived on Ash Creek. This is the only cabin we've seen in ten miles. Well, there's somebody out in front, pulling the dust. Must be her, huh? Yeah. How do, ma'am? Not it. You, Miss Boggs? How do you know my name? Well, we ran into a buffalo hunter way back. He said he thought you lived down along here somewhere. He was pretty nosy, wasn't he? I'm a marshal out of Dodge, Matt Dillon. This is Chester Proudfoot. I do, ma'am. Just what do you want here, Marshal? Oh, we're looking for Orson Boggs, ma'am. He is your husband, isn't he? Of course, he's my husband. Is he around? I'd like to talk to him. And he ain't here. Ain't been here for some days, so you might as well tell me what this is all about. Uh, did you know a man named Gus Mather, friend of your husband? My husband don't have no friends, Marshal. We come out here to lead a moral life, to keep away from people and temptation and sin and worldliness. Are you sure picked a good spot for him? Miss Boggs, uh, do you know where your husband is? He went off on a hunting trip. Said he was getting restless. And he went alone? Of course he went alone. What's this all about, Marshal? Miss Boggs, that man I mentioned, Gus Mather... He's in Dodge, telling everybody that Orson's dead. He ain't dead. I'd know it. Somehow, I'd know it if he was. Gus Mather claims he's Orson's best friend. He's lying. He's got to be. You sure you don't know him? About 55, spry, gray-haired? I told you. Orson don't have no friends. Well, then how did Gus Mather know Orson's name? How should I know? I ain't responsible for this Gus Mather. Now, if you leave me be, I got work to do. Good day to you, Marshal. Well, if that ain't the cold bloodest woman I ever did meet. She's hiding something, Chester. Too bad it ain't her face. We going back to Dodge now? Yeah. And I have a hunch it won't be too long before she's there, too.
income tax time seem a long way off? Not for the smart taxpayer it isn't. It's time now to round up all the facts and give them a leisurely going over. Haste makes waste of possible tax savings. Haste also makes for mathematical mistakes, which result in returned returns. File early. Now, while there's time to make sure you have passed up no legal chance to save yourself tax dollars. Assistance, free assistance in any aspect of your income tax return, is available for the asking by phone or in person at any Internal Revenue Service office listed in your phone book under the United States government listings. Don't hesitate to ask. Don't hesitate to learn which form it's to your best advantage to use. Having decided that, do a slow, careful job with all the help you need to get your return mathematically correct, factually accurate. And take advantage of every legal means to cut your tax bill, something you can best do when you leave plenty of time for the job. Matthew, you was talking about. I'd like to have a look at him. Well, he's your Long Branch, Mr. Dillon. L at least he was an hour ago. The Long Branch is that saloon just across the street there. The saloon. The earth will open up one day and swallow this sinful town, Marshal. Well, I'm afraid they just built another one like it. Uh, Chester, why don't you go get Gus Mather out of there from his bugs, huh? I said I'd like to have a look at him. I won't talk to any man who has liquor on his breath. Well, would you mind getting close enough to look through the window at him, Miss Box? And no closer. All right, let's go then. You might maybe have went, but no. Let's see. From what I hear about Gus Mather, he'll be there, all right. Yeah, he's there. He's drunk. Little, maybe. I thought you said you didn't know Gus Mather. I've seen him. But I never knew what he called himself. Then he is a friend of your husband's. Huh? Marshal, that man in there is no friend of my husband or of mine. Never was. We wouldn't endure such sinful ways, lying, living in corruption. He's going down to the eternal fires of damnation. You feel mighty strong about Gus Mather, don't you? My husband was a fine, upstanding man. Well, what's that got to do with Mather in there? Precious little, I can tell you. Well, Marshal, I've seen what i come to Dodge to see. Orson would be better off dead than in there. Yes, ma'am. Well, what are you going to do now? I'm going home. First thing in the morning. Well, there's a good hotel up the street here. Thank you kindly, Marshal. Well, if that don't be all traveling all this way just to take a look at Gus Mather. She had more reason than that, Chester. What's that? I don't know exactly. But go find Doc and then meet me at the office. We're going to make a little trip up to Boot Hill. <laughs> Covered with dirt? Uh, what have you been doing? You wouldn't believe me if I told you, Miss Kitty. Have you seen Gus Mather, Kitty? Gus? Yeah. About the middle of the afternoon, he went out back. He was mighty drunk. Long about dark, some fella found him and carried him up to dock. He thought he was dead at first. Probably had the fan tods. <laughs> I was looking for you earlier, Matt. Where were you? Digging up a grave on Boot Hill. On him. He's been in there 24 hours a day, every day since that week. Now, when we want him, he's passed out. Uh, there isn't much we can do about it now. Let's get some sleep. We'll see Gus in the morning. This morning. Well, his patient ain't the man he used to be, Marshal. 
Oh, I, I'm still drinking forever. Well, you'd better be, or you'll have no insides left. Oh, yeah. Uh, come in. Oh. Uh, yes, ma'am? You don't look so sick to me. Well, he was sick, ma'am. Mighty sick. Uh, this is Mrs. Boggs, Doc. Mrs. Orson Boggs. I heard about him being drunk in an alley. Now, some men drug him up here. Well, now, Mrs. Boggs... I write she... that ought to be your deathbed you're lying on. <laughs> hey, it would be a blessed thing if you was to have a... Forgiven nature. Forgiveness belongs to the Lord. Well... Not to us here below. Get your pants on. Excuse me, Miss Boggs, but this is a mighty oh, sick man. Get your pants on. Yeah? He was sick. And it done him good, but he's coming home now. I'm getting him home. Oh. He just tried to do away with Orson Boggs, but it didn't work. No man can escape himself. Then Gus here is Orson Boggs? Wait, you don't seem too surprised. Last night, Chester and I spent some time on Boot Hill. We found the coffin here, Barrett. There was just a log in it. No body. No Orson Boggs. Oh, I thought I heard everybody plumb fool. He ran off. What? Stole our savings. Spent every penny. The miserable sinner. Yeah. That's all true, Marshal. I thought up the whole plan myself. I just got tired of being good all the time. Well, you're going back to being good. Yeah. And you're going to stay good the rest of your life. Now, come on. Let's get started home. All right, come on. <laughs> well, Doc, at least we know Orson Boggs isn't dead. But if you ask me, Matt, uh, he was a whole lot better off when he was. Hi, this is Dennis James to make a point about reliable, effective Kellogg's All Brand. Repeat after me, please. What do you want when you need brand? What do you want when you need brand? Reliability. Reliability. Now, what do you get in Kellogg's All Brand? What do you get in Kellogg's All Brand? Reliability. Right. You see, Kellogg's All Brand is the reliable brand that millions depend on for the effectiveness they want. It's the real Battle Creek formula that brings you more brand bulk in every serving. More of the vital brand bulk that helps you keep regular. Kellogg's All Brand is also low in calories and mighty pleasant tasting. You can trust Kellogg's for that. The crisp toasted shreds have the kind of good bran muffin flavor that most folks are partial to. So next time you are shopping, get Kellogg's All Bran and you'll get reliability. That's what you get in Kellogg's All Bran. Reliability. <laughs> Gunsmoke. Produced and directed in Hollywood by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston and adapted for radio by Norman MacDonald. Featured in the cast were John Daner and Virginia Gregg. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. This is George Walsh inviting you to join us again next week when CBS Radio presents another story on gun smoke. Have a happy habit. Monday through Friday, Bing Crosby and Rosemary Clooney on the CBS Radio Network. Save now at Zenith Cleaners. Four men's shirts laundered the magic personalized Zenith way. Only 87 cents cash and carry at all Zenith Cleaners. You're tuned to KRLD, AM and FM, Dallas, 1080 Complete Big Time Radio, the 50,000-watt voice of Texas.